This is Lenia, a cellular automaton, reported in its paper as a new system of artificial life. There are many variants to Lenia, each exhibiting its own complex behaviors. This is similar to one of the godfathers of cellular automatons, The Game of Life by John Conway. There are vast forms of cellular automatons. There is the Langton's Ant, the Fluid Model, the Predator-Prey Ecology, 3D Cellular Automatons, Cave Generation, Forest Fire Simulations, Fire Simulations, Stacked Generations, and the list goes on. As I ventured in this field from one-dimensional to two-dimensional to three-dimensional cellular automatons, I eventually developed my own generation rule, based on music. We begin this voyage in the one-dimensional world, that way we have a better foundation for what's to come. So imagine a row, and in this row, each little box is called a cell. If the cell is alive, it's an uno. If it's dead, you guessed it, it's a zero. Now, each cell has two neighbors, one on the left and one on the right. There are eight possible configurations for a cell with neighbors. For example, if it's dead and has no alive cells near it, then there are three zeros. If it's dead and there's one alive cell by its right side, then it has a one on the right side, and so on and so forth. And we have the power to say, oh, okay, if, say for example, this is the case, then we want the cell to die in the next generation, or live, whatever you like. These are called rule sets, an integer array with eight slots for the eight possible configurations. With this logic, I set up a grid and coded my first cellular automaton. Keep in mind these are one-dimensional cells, yet each generation is drawn on top of the previous one so it looks 2D for us. Here is another example with a random rule set I put. Finally, I coded a reload method that generates a random rule set every time the cells reach the top of our screen. So enjoy our final ride in the one-dimensional world. Hello again, we've unlocked the 2D world skill tree my dudes. I must say that my initial inspiration to forgo this journey began with a video that I saw. There was something about these geometrical patterns that made me consider this concept like some sort of cosmic tool or something. Yet these complex structures all stem from three simple rules. Don't let your ADHD make you run away. It's three simple rules. So imagine a grid in space. I'm gonna put a grid right here. There it is, beautiful grid. Where each cell now has eight neighbors. Anyway, where each cell has eight neighbors. This is what we'll use for the three rules that are called the game of life. If the cell has four or more neighbors, it dies of overpopulation. If the cell has one or less neighbors, it dies of loneliness. If the cell has exactly three neighbors, it is born. And that's it. You got through them. I'd like to know that sometimes the game of life creates intriguing creatures. One to keep an eye out for is the glider, which you'll see real soon. Plug the rules into some code and behold, the game of life.
You're officially a cellular automaton engineer, my dudes. We can also give each cell a color relative to its rules, attaining visual appeal. Give these bad boys some color lerping and what you get is on another level. But y'all know me, I ain't about losing. Been a long time in this league, I ain't about losing. So I pressed on even further and I coded everything again in Java. Why? Because Unity crashes. Because I'm doing it in a very inefficient way and the only way I can do it effectively is with shaders. And y'all know me, I ain't about losing, but shaders, I ain't about shaders as well. <laughs> Anyway, in Java, I realized about generation rules. Before, I've been instantiating the cells at random positions. But one can manipulate these initial cell instantiations based on a rule regarding each cell position. So here is a montage of the best rules I found. Enjoy. We've evolved, boys and girls. A new phenomenon, they call us. For now, we're gonna dwell not on the 2D, not on the 1D, but on the 3Ds. So, chicks, y'all better be careful, because now we got 3Ds. Okay, no, that was weird. Okay, so this one is gonna be relatively quick, because I want to show you something even more cooler. Basically, now we're gonna break Unity. Because before, we were using pixels to render the one-dimensional and two-dimensional cellular automatons but for a three-dimensional cellular automaton we can't do pixels because pixels don't have depth the depth dimension will vary depending if the cell was just born or if it's been dead for a while moving in and out accordingly here is an example So that is my basic idea of three-dimensional cells. But now I want to show you something even more cool. So you know how I explained that we can change the initial instantiation of each cell, varying on a rule? Well, I figured out a way to make that rule be about music. That's right, the linguistics of a love, my dude. The linguistics of nature. I don't know what the that means. I ingested various tutorials regarding the audio spectrum, which is... I still don't know what it is. <laughs> but essentially what it means is you get that no when you have a low note and a high note. So my plan was, if I have a high note playing, then I want to instantiate some cells around the grid. And if I have a low sound, then instantiate some cells in the center. It's size directly proportional to the frequency. So I'll leave you guys to see this result. So you can all try this at home. It was fun to do and took me like two weeks. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, do the like and subscribe thing, you know, cause we're homies. Until next time, I am signing out.